We're glad you're joining us for A New Beginning with Greg Laurie, a podcast supported by Harvest Partners. Get more encouraging audio content when you subscribe to Pastor Greg's Daily Devos. Learn more and sign up at Harvest.org. Our objective is to go lead others to Christ, establish them spiritually, and do it again and again and again. Basically, it's wash, rinse, repeat. Pastor Greg Laurie says the Lord calls us all to practice discipleship, to step out of our comfort zone and help someone begin to walk with the Lord. Just do it. Enough talking about it. Just do it. Go lead someone to Christ, help get them stabilized, and do it again. This is the day when the lost are found. given each of us a job. It's an important job. But we probably spend a lot more time at the job that's printed on our business card than engaged in the job God has given us. God didn't put us here to be the vice president of this or the regional director of that. Pastor Greg Laurie points out today our main job is to show others how to know the Lord. Today on A New Beginning, some practical insight on how to do that job well. The job is discipleship, and we've all been called to that privilege. You know, when I first became a Christian, I really didn't fully understand what I'd done. Uh, I went forward at a little Bible study in my high school campus, as I've told you many times, and I prayed this little prayer. I didn't know what was ahead of me. I didn't know what was going to happen to me, but I, I believed what I heard. And not long after that, a guy comes up to me that I don't know from Adam's house cat. He says, hi, my name is Mark, and I saw that you went forward and prayed to accept Jesus the other day. I was kind of like resentful, like, yeah, so, and no, but hey, I want to help you. I want to take you to church. I'm like, no, that's okay. I don't want to go to church. No, no, I really want to take you to church. And I have to tell you something about this guy, Mark. Mark wasn't a cool guy. He wasn't the kind of guy I would have normally hung around, but he was so doggone persistent and he wouldn't take no for an answer. And the best way, let me take you to church. Finally I said, okay. But he didn't just take me to church. He introduced me to other Christians. He had me over at his house for dinner with his mom and his dad. We're just kids at this point. I'm talking to Christians. I'm asking questions. No question was too ridiculous to ask. Here's what Mark was doing. He was discipling me. And if he had not done that, I fear I would have fallen through the cracks. Because a lot of times after a person accepts Christ, they don't know what to do next. And so he helped me in that transition. And what Mark did for me, we need to do for others. Because that's what the Great Commission is. Again, it's to go into all the world and preach the gospel and then make disciples of all nations. Listen, if you're following Jesus as a real disciple, you will be leading others to Christ. Let me reverse that. If you're not leading others to Christ, are you really following Him as you ought to as a disciple? Here's our commission. Again, Matthew 28, verse 16. Go therefore, says Jesus, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given to you, and lo, I am with you, even to the end of the age. So here's our job. Here's discipleship simplified. I've told you what a disciple is. Now let me tell you what a disciple does or what it means to make disciples of others. Our objective is to go lead others to Christ, establish them spiritually, and do it again and again and again. Basically it's wash, rinse, repeat. Evangelize, disciple, stabilize, repeat. Do it over and over again. But somewhere along the line, we've sort of separated evangelism from discipleship. And they're one and the same. We're not just called to invite people to Christ, but then we need to take these new believers under our wing and help them get up on their feet spiritually. So here's a few things a new believer needs. Number one, they need assurance. They need assurance. 
They need to be reassured that God loves them and God has forgiven them and that their name is written in the book of life. One passage everyone should commit to memory is 1 John 5.13 where John writes, I write these things to you that believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. Reassure a believer of that. Because remember in the Garden of Eden Satan attacked Adam and Eve. You remember how he attacked? He said to them, did God say what you really thought God said? And he'll do that in the life of a new believer. And for the, that matter, <laughs> Older believers sometimes too, right? Are you really saved? Do you think Christ has really forgiven you? It's not based on how I feel. It's based on what God has done. New believers need assurance. Number two, new believers need protection. They need protection. When you're holding a, a little baby, you have to hold them carefully and hold them in the proper way and support them and, and anything that could harm them. You, you put yourself in the way of that thing and new believers need protection as well. Uh, Galatians 4.19 says, My dear children, I feel as though I'm going through labor pains for you again and they will continue until Christ is fully developed in your life. New believers are vulnerable to their emotions as well as being vulnerable to false teaching. Old friends will try to drag them down. Old girlfriends and old boyfriends will materialize out of nowhere. Temptations will come that maybe they've never experienced before, right? You remember that yourself. So they need to be protected. And just as in the parable of the sower, Jesus talked about the seed sown on the roadside, eaten by the birds, and he said, these are they that hear the word of God, but Satan comes immediately and snatches it away. The new believer doesn't know what's happening, but we do. So we need to help them. And number three, they need food. They need food. So when you're a new believer, you're hungry for the word of God. Can you remember the first time you read the Bible as a new Christian? Now if you were raised in the church, it was familiar, but perhaps it came alive to you. But if you were more like me and you weren't raised in the church, you started hearing these things for the first time. I'm just a kid, 17 years old. And I'm reading these things in the Bible that relate to me as a 17 year old. And I still relate to them as a 40 year old with added years. And so it's relevant to you in your youth. It's relevant to you in your middle age. It's relevant to you in your old age. Number four, new believers need an example. They need to see what a Christian looks like. You see, some things are taught and some things are caught. As Paul said in 2 Timothy 3.10, 3, there is no 3.10, 3.10. He says to Timothy, you've observed my teaching, listen, my conduct, my aim in life, and my faith. So it's not just my teaching, it's my conduct, it's my aim in life, it's my faith. You've seen an example. And let's be honest now. Here's one of the reasons we don't want new believers in our life. We don't want to change our behavior. See, because if I take a new believer with me to church and we go to lunch after and they're with me, I can't gossip. <laughs> if I have a new believer with me, I'll probably drive the speed limit and I'll probably talk about the message and do things a Christian ought to do already. Maybe we don't want that added pressure in our life. But we're missing out not only on helping them, but on helping ourselves. Pastor Greg follows up on that in just a moment. We'll see how new believers need long-time believers to show them the way. But long-time believers need new believers just as much. More on that in a moment. Hey everybody, I want to encourage you to join us for something we call Harvest at Home. It happens every Sunday at harvest.org and on our brand new app, Harvest Plus, which is available on your mobile TV devices. Download it now and you can watch Harvest at Home with Christians from around the world as we worship together and study God's Word. So again, join us for Harvest at Home at harvest.org or on Harvest Plus. Well, Pastor Greg is pointing out the importance of taking part in the discipleship process, showing a new believer what it means to live for the Lord. Let's continue. And I think this is a, an important thing to have a new believer in your life because they will energize you. 
You know, someone asked me in an interview recently, what do you like to do in your spare time? I had to think about that. What do I do in my spare time? Uh, I don't have a lot of spare time. But I thought, well, I ride my Harley occasionally and very occasionally at this point. I surf once in a blue moon. So what do I do? And I thought for a moment, I thought, I know what I do in my spare time. I hang out with my grandkids. They looked at me like, yeah, and what else? That's kind of it. I really like to hang around with my grandkids. Uh, because you know what? They energize me, you see. I like to be with them. And I don't make them enter my world. I don't sit them, you know, behind the computer and say, kids, study these commentaries and give me some points. No, I enter their world. I sit down and watch cartoons with them. I know all the characters' names on SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> right? And we go get ice cream and we go to the playground and I watch them play and we talk together and, and then we have interesting spiritual conversations too. Last night we had a really interesting one. My granddaughter Allie was asking me about her rabbit that died. Will she see the rabbit again in heaven? And then she wants to know if she'll have a pet wolf in heaven and all these great questions. I love them though. But that energizes me. See that's good for me and it's good for us because some grandparents have houses where they have a lot of breakable things. Things. Well, I don't want the grandkids over because we have breakable things. Can I make a suggestion? Get rid of the breakable things and invite the grandkids over, okay? And if it will help, I will come over and just break those things and we'll get, you know, is this one of them? Yes. Okay, grandkids, come on. And in the same way, if we have a life that is not welcoming of new believers, something is wrong. They need you, but listen to this. You need them. Why? Because you will discover things you take for granted. Oh yeah, I'm going to heaven. Oh yeah, you know, the word of God is true. Oh yeah, Jesus is coming back. Oh yeah, yeah, really? Because you talk about a new believer. You share these truths with them and they hear it for the first time and they are so excited and you rediscover it. The first time a child tries ice cream. I remember our son Jonathan, I gave him ice cream when he was a newborn. <laughs> Kathy was slightly horrified. I think she was still nursing him. And she, I, I gave him ice cream. Why did you do that? I said, but he smiled. <laughs> and he had a little baby, didn't he? I gave him the little, he went, mm. you know, so I, I enjoyed that. I got to see that for the first time. First time a child sees snow. The first time a child uh, walks on the sand. Uh, the first time a child discovers something and that you take for granted. He goes in that wonderful. See, they need you to stabilize them. You need them to revitalize you. Because we begin to take these things for granted, as I said, and don't perhaps enjoy them as much as we ought to. And new believers are the lifeblood of the church and they're also the lifeblood of older Christians. Some churches grow by church transfer growth. Most of their congregants come from other churches. Harvest grows primarily from new convert growth. And that is the best kind of growth, by the way. And some churches, they might be more Calvinistic or more on the reform side, will not invite people to Christ in their services because they're afraid they're going to call the non-elect to Christ. Because they believe these people are predestined and they only want to see the predestined believe and they don't want to give false assurance to the non-elect. I like what D.L. Moody said years ago. He said, Lord, save the elect and then elect some more. Okay? But here's the way I see it. God knows who is predestined. My job is to preach the gospel and invite people to Jesus Christ and we'll keep doing that. And I don't have time to go into all these things but among the beliefs of those who are reformed uh, they would believe in total depravity which means that you're so depraved or so dead in your sin you can't respond to the gospel unless you've been predestined. I disagree. I believe God has given us a free will and an ability to choose and that's why so many verses appeal to the free will of man. Others would believe uh, in the reformed tradition and I have many friends who are reformed and love them but I disagree with them on these points. They believe in irresistible grace. If God's calling you, you cannot resist it because you're predestined. I'm sorry, disagree. I think you can resist it and harden your heart against God because of many verses that say that. 
And then others would say, well, there's limited atonement. Christ only died for the elect. No, I don't believe that. I believe Christ died for the whole world. And whosoever will believe in Him can be forgiven of their sin. Those are important distinctions. Those are important distinctions. Harvest is not a reformed church. Nor are we an Arminian church, as some would say. You're Arminians, and it takes too long to go into what all of that means. But I know some reformed people who are more passionate about evangelizing Arminians than they are about non-believers. We are not Calvinist. We are not Arminian. We are Biblicists at Harvest. We believe in what the Bible says, and we'll go according to that. So we believe in predestination, but we also believe in the free will of man. How can you believe in both? Because both are in the Bible. That's why we believe both. And we're an evangelistic church without apology. And we want to see people that don't know the Lord come to the Lord. That's our passion. So discipling. We're all called to do this. Nobody gets off the hook, nor should anyone want to get off the hook. Because this is a privilege. But it is also a responsibility. And I think sometimes the reason we don't do it is because we're afraid of failure or we're afraid that, that uh, we won't do a very good job at it. Listen, you know what a new believer needs more than anything else? They just need a friend. They don't need a Bible scholar. Hey, if you're a Bible scholar, all the better, but they don't need that. They just need someone to show them what a real, living, breathing Christian looks like. And if you'll take that new believer under your wing, not only will you help them, but you'll help yourself. We're all called to do this, but if we're honest, a lot of us just don't. Uh, and I think we need to ask God to help us because He's commanded us to go. But what did Jesus say? All power is given to me in heaven and on earth, Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations. Wait, I don't get the therefore. All power has been given unto me. Therefore all the resources you need are given to you. So go. Just do it. Enough talking about it. Just do it. Go lead someone to Christ. Help get them stabilized and do it again. And if you haven't done that, find someone who's new in the faith and help them out and get them into your small group and bring them into your life and help them learn what it means to be a Christian and you watch them grow spiritually and it will have a revitalizing effect on your life. Pastor Greg Laurie with great insight today on a new beginning from his message called, Just Do It. And there's a final comment Pastor Greg wants to share from this study before we leave for the day, so stay with us. We've been talking of the importance of the joy of bringing someone to the Lord. Can you think of someone who is instrumental in bringing you to the Lord? Thank the Lord for them. If you've never taken that step, you can do it today. Pastor Greg, what would you say to the person listening who wants to do that right now? I would say that God is just a prayer away. You know, it doesn't take years to become a Christian. It doesn't take months. Frankly, it doesn't even take hours. It can happen so quickly. It just starts with you saying to God, I know I'm a sinner. I know that you love me. I know that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for my sin and pay for those sins and then to rise again from the dead, and I want him to come into my life. So here's my question to you. Have you done that yet? Because Jesus, who did die on that cross and rose again from the dead three days later, is alive and standing at the door of your life right now, and he's knocking. And he's saying, if you'll hear my voice and open the door, I will come in. Why don't you just stop whatever it is you're doing and pray this prayer with me? Say, Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner, but I know that you are the Savior who died on the cross for my sin and rose again from the dead. I'm sorry for my sin, and I turn from it now, and I choose to follow you from this moment forward. I ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen. If you just prayed that prayer, the Bible promises that God has heard your prayer and has answered that prayer. 
The Bible says that we will confess our sin. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, God bless you. You've made the right decision, the decision to follow Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And listen, as you begin to live this new life, we want to send you something to help you get started off right. It's Pastor Greg's New Believer's Bible. It's an easy-to-understand translation, plus hundreds and hundreds of study helps, especially for those who are new to the faith. It'll answer the questions you may have. So get in touch for your copy of the New Believer's Bible. We'll send it free of charge. Just call 1-800-821-3300. That's 1-800-821-3300. Or go online to harvest.org and click No God. Well, Pastor Greg, we're excited to hear from so many people who tell us how they're enjoying the new animated cartoon series called The Adventures of Ben Born Again and Yellow Dog. Mm. Uh, One listener said, my granddaughter loved the first installment. She's watched it about five times already. We can't wait for more. Let me ask you, what cartoons did you watch the most when you were a kid? Can you remember? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, Well, I watched all kinds of cartoons. I watched all the Looney Tunes because they were on television, you know, Daffy (laughs) Duck and Elmer Fudd and Bugs Bunny. I really liked the Roadrunner, and I don't know why I liked him (laughs) so much, but maybe there was less dialogue and just more funny things happening in Wile E. Coyote. Of course, big fan of that. Uh, I also would watch all the Hanna-Barbera cartoons. I love the Flintstones, the Jetsons, Yogi Bear, Hey Boo Boo, you know. Um, (laughs) And I also liked the Peanuts cartoons. They started to animate those in the 60s, and I was a big fan of the Peanuts cartoon strip, and I even corresponded by letter with Charles M. Schultz, the creator of Peanuts, and he graciously responded to me on more than one occasion. So I just liked all kinds of cartoons. I also liked the Pink Panther. There was hardly any dialogue, but I just thought it was a hilarious cartoon. In fact, I downloaded it recently, and I was showing it to my grandkids. I'm not sure that it aged perfectly. (laughs) They sort of looked at it rather quizzically, like, okay, what? But, uh, (laughs) yes, I, I, I watched so many cartoons on television, and I was a real cartoon aficionado. Yeah. Just yesterday, I was showing one of the Ben Born Again cartoons on my phone to a lady who was not a native English speaker. So sometimes there's a little bit of a, a communication breakdown. But I tell you what, that cartoon, she understood everything. <laughs> she understood it perfectly and was even repeating the words as they were unfolding. And I was amazed at the power of art and animation to bridge the gap and reach someone who maybe wasn't familiar with English, or also to reach a child. And so I'm always looking for new ways to engage new people. As I've said before, we want to reach unexpected people in unexpected places with an unexpected message. So we do this through our films. We do it through animation. We do it just through our general radio ministry. So often I'll have people say, I was just flipping you know, the dial on my radio and came across your program, and they didn't even know they were listening to it first. They, they thought it was some kind of a really awful comedian speaking, and then they realized <laughs> it was a preacher. But I've heard stories of these people coming to Christ, and so it's sort of like fishing. You just throw your nets out. You, you throw your line out, just hoping you get a bite, because there's so many people that are searching for truth, and I want to go out there and get to where they are, and reach them with the only truth that can change their life. So this month, we're offering a special resource called the Ben Born Again New Believers Growth Book. This is a brand new resource. We've had a version of it out for years, but we have revisited it, rebuilt it, and redrawn it with these new characters, Ben Born Again and Yellow Dog. And we'll offer it to you for your gift of any size. This would be a great resource to share with your child or with your grandchild. And I encourage you when you order this New Believers Growth Book that you are generous because that enables us to continue to come your way on our radio broadcast, through our podcast, through all of our other ways of communication, and also through animation. So whatever you send will be used to continue to bring the gospel to our generation. And in advance, let me say thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We're very grateful. 
So get in touch right away with your investment. And as the Lord leads, ask about becoming a Harvest Partner, one of the faithful inner circle of our friends who support us each month. And then let us thank you tangibly with our new Ben Born Again New Believers Growth Book. But we can only mention this a short time longer, so get in touch right away. You can call us anytime, 24-7 at 1-800-821-3300. That's 1-800-821-3300. Or write A New Beginning, Box 4000, Riverside, California, 92514. Or go online to harvest.org. Well, next time, Pastor Greg takes us to a revealing study in Matthew 5, based on the Lord's Sermon on the Mount. But before we go today, Pastor Greg closes this final message in his discipleship series this way. I would like to have a prayer now where all of us would ask God to fill us with the Holy Spirit and give us a passion to do this. And I would ask that you would pray a prayer with me where you're asking God to empower you. The Bible says, You will receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you to be witnesses unto me. And that's what we want to be witnesses. We want to fulfill the Great Commission. So we need this power. So let's pray for it in our lives right now. Let's all bow our heads. Father, I pray for everyone here. And I pray that we will seek to, well, just do this. That we'll take steps of faith and just initiate conversations and look for people new in the faith and do everything we can to help them, not only for their sake, but for ours. So we don't reach spiritual stagnation. So we don't find ourselves going backwards instead of forward. But Lord, we can't do this on our own. We need help and we need power. And you've promised us power to be a witness and we're gonna ask for it right now. Now everyone, I'm gonna just lead you in a prayer and I'd ask you to just pray this prayer out loud after me. Again, as I pray, just pray this. Lord Jesus, you've called me to go into all the world and preach the gospel and make disciples. But I've not always done this, Lord. But I want to. So I need the power you offer. So fill me with the Holy Spirit. Give me a holy boldness like I've never known before. Give me a burden for lost people. Give me a heart for those that are new in the faith. Help me to make disciples. Father, you've heard that prayer and now we all pray that you will seal it with your power and even today we'll just sense your leading and look for those opportunities. They're everywhere. And what a joy, what a privilege it is to see people grow in the faith. The next thing to seeing them come to Christ is seeing them grow in their faith. They become spiritually mature. Lord, you've called us to do this. Help us to start doing it. And we commit ourselves to you. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. A New Beginning is a podcast made possible by Harvest Partners, helping people everywhere know God. If this show has impacted your life, share your story, leave a review on your favorite podcast app, and help others find hope.